Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live. Now, industry survey finds that South Africans are spending more time on social media than ever before and that this has a significant and direct impact on e-commerce. In a recent internet use survey conducted by Shortlist, South Africa's ranked fourth globally when it came to the amount of time people spend online per day. For more on this, we're joined on Zoom by Mari Leg, who is the co-founder of Webfluential and Chief Strategy Officer. So good morning. Welcome to Morning Live. I mean, let's start with understanding the relationship between social media and e-commerce. Unpack this for us. Thanks so much for having me, Lebo. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty interesting survey. So what the, the results of the survey were, were that South Africans spend on average just over 10 hours a day on the internet. So uh, that's obviously connected through their, uh, their computer for work, uh, but mostly their phone. Um, I think supporting that is is obviously the fact that there's a lot of internet uh, access and 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 penetration within within the country, um, but consumers are are really spending a lot of time um, as a part of that on social media, and in doing so, they're learning a lot about brands, they're learning about services, um, and and they're starting to to interact with those and actually go on to purchase them at an e-commerce point of sale. Mm. So it's it's naturally a discovery process. Um, where, where people are, are learning about uh, what, what their friends, colleagues and, and other uh, citizens are up to and then they're going on to, to actually uh, buy those things through, through their phones or, or even on their computers. Mm -hmm. What is the driver behind this? Um, I mean, I think it's, it's probably been an accelerant from, uh, from COVID. So, you know, normally where we were going into, into the mall um, uh, to experience different products and services and buy them there. Uh, a lot more engagement happens on on your phone. So so you either chatting about uh, you know what it is that you're interested with your friends on WhatsApp. Um, maybe you're learning about it from a post on Facebook, and then you um, you're clicking through to the point of purchase. Um, together with this, obviously brands have invested. I think the survey found that 57% uh, of brands now offered a, um, a digital point of sale where prior to COVID they didn't. Mm. So that's obviously helped in, in the journey. So, you know, brands are doing their part and, and people are, are spending time on, the, on, on their phones. And then, you know, I, I guess mobile payments are part of it. Uh, people trust in the process and there's the, the logistics part. So the whole ecosystem has really just grown um, to allow for this to happen. And, and in a way it's been really good for consumers because they can learn about it. They can, they can really test and survey uh, if this is good value, but also um, they, you know, brands don't have to spend or fit the bill to go and build new stores and hope that people walk in the front door. Um, this can all happen now just through your phone. Mari, I'm curious, in comparison to other countries, um, how is South Africa doing and what, which other countries are doing, you know, are higher on the list? So, so I mean, we were, we were fourth. Um, and and only by by a margin. I mean, mm. there, there was an, uh, only a few more minutes extra um, from from the top three um, that kind of got them into first, second, and third. Um, but but I think the uh, the interesting part is is um, is obviously we're we're a very connected community um, of South Africans. We're we're a vibrant vibrant um, community of of citizens. We like having our opinion. We like sharing uh, news with uh, with each other socializing some of the good and some of the bad about you know our, our, our country um and and that translates into into action online so um, we're very outspoken on social channels um south africans uh, perform really well in terms of presence on on twitter and facebook particularly and um and and yeah it's a it's it's an interesting trend obviously there's the downside of it there's the addiction to um social media um there's the <laughs> You know the, the rest of our, our lives that get missed out on because we spent spend our time connected through to our phones um but you know i, I think it supports the fact that we we love to to share our opinion and uh and and go through to shop speak to us about how the influence and importance of social media in the path to purchase is undeniable yeah, that's a great point, Label. So, I mean, when you spend your time on uh, Instagram and Twitter, you're seeing content that's generated by users. Um, so user-generated content is uh, content that we uh, enjoy consuming and that we trust. Videos on TikTok made by people that we know or know of um, are ones that we interact with, far more so than uh, canned content that's being produced by brands. 
So that's sort of the, the magic source where in, the influencer comes in is to say the influencer is really good at telling the brand story. So what's happening a lot more now is, is brands are uh, engaging with these communities of influencers to help develop the narrative about that particular brand or campaign or strategy and share that with an audience in an organic way. Mm -hmm. So influencers are becoming a, a key part of it and their audiences hold those influencers to account on some of the, the content uh, and the comments and um, the thoughts that they share about those, those brands. Mm. So it's, a, it's, it's really a transparency loop that's coming. Um, and you know, you, you know, gone are the days where you can flight an ad on a, um, you know, a, as a brand in a one-way communication. You're now gonna get feedback on that very soon from a consumer uh, perspective. Yeah, and you also say that the internet is undergoing a global social revolution. I mean, tell us more about this. What do you mean by this? I mean, it's it's interesting to see from a political perspective. Um, I think people uh, value their independence so much. And, you know, we've had sort of these waves of it through civilization where people want to be heard and people want to be part of the part of the conversation. Social media allows for that to happen. And, you know, w whether it's the Arab Spring, mm. um, you know, w whether it's an uprising because of, uh, you know, something that's happened within a country, whether it's re a reaction to a world event like the Queen's passing, there is so much content that now gets generated and shared uh, because of that. So um, I think we're part of the, this, this new wave now. I wouldn't call it a revolution per se, but definitely an evolution of people's uh, priority of their independence. and and permission that people have to be able to share their thoughts online. So mm -hmm. we're definitely seeing a lot more of that. And it, I mean, why is e-commerce sales presence fast becoming a must like for businesses and brands who want to remain relevant because of what is happening at the moment? So F&B ran a survey as part of the, this broader research into the space and they uh, predict that by 2025, um, the number of e-commerce sales in South Africa is going to surpass a billion. And at an average purchase price per sale of 400 Rand, that translates to 400 billion Rand's worth of economic activity. And if you're a brand, that's a material number. I don't think you want to you wanna let that one go by. Mm. So there's, uh, I wouldn't say there's pressure, but there's, there's, uh, there's so much nascent activity that's happening in this space. Um, you know, the, we used to have this relationship with cash uh, where, you know, you used to hold a hundred rand note and, and it used to feel like it had some weight. It's a lot more difficult to do that when, uh, when it's all digital and you can just tap yeah. and your, your money disappears <laughs> out of your account and someone else has got your hundred rand these days. Yeah. So um, all of the digital rails that have been put in place to allow for e-commerce are all in support of, um, of e-commerce. And, um, and uh, yeah, I think uh, it's an interesting place for, for uh, brands to start learning about yeah. what their consumers are saying, where, they, where they're participating and how they want to buy and consume those services. Mm -hmm. All right, Murray, the interesting conversation. Thank you so much for opening our eyes this morning. Murray Legg is the co-founder of Webfluential and Chief Strategy Officer. We've been talking about the significance of social media for e-commerce in South Africa.